and five, a big one for this Weaver State offense. They're up 11 to three, but the offense has not gotten into the end zone. They scored on a defensive play. Constantine looking. Pocket collapse. He's going to try to run for it. He'll be well short. He's had nowhere to go. You know, that's a play where if you're coaching the quarterback on that play, you're in empty. You know that there could be some sort of pressure because a lot of times they'll bring more than you have to protect. you got to know where your dump down is. you got to know where the sticks are to be able to give yourself a chance to make that play because it's tough to run as a quarterback and get first downs all the time. So he'll grow into that. He, he, he's trying to take care of the football, but eventually he's got to make that throw and make that connection. This time Brady Shutt has a clean punt. Fair caught at the 20. And when we come back, the Coyotes will have the ball once again. Weaver State has the lead, 11 to 3. Seven-time Grammy Award winner Carrie Underwood brings you her new studio album, Cry Pretty. Featuring the hits Cry Pretty and Love Wins. Cry Pretty, the new album from superstar Carrie Underwood. Available now. Tickets for the Cry Pretty Tour 360 are available now at CarrieUnderwoodOfficial.com. Staying ahead isn't about waiting for a chance. It's about the one bold choice you make that moves you forward. The one and only Cadillac Escalade. It's going to be rough, right? So hold on. Had to prepare for the worst, hope for the best. We are in restricted visibility. We have zero visibility. From executive producer Al Roker, Coast Guard, Florida, weekdays at 6 p.m. Hey, 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 hey. Don't go over it all. You want to start again? This is my younger brother. I taught him everything he knows. The pride of law! He's black! What's Mickey supposed to do? Dickie's in jail. You can't be me. You had a hard enough time being you when you had your chance, and that's why you're in here. And he needs me, you know. And I know. He needs you. It's interesting. It was a Weaver State's up to 67 yards of offense. South Dakota 41. At one point, South Dakota had 10 more yards than that, but they've lost so much on Weaver State's fine defensive play that it, it, it's actually shrunk as right. they pick up. It all counts, though. There. Yeah. It all counts. Yeah, that's right. tr very true. <laughs> Austin Simmons, though, 7 of 11 for 48 yards, and Constantine's 4 of 8. But, again, with an 11-3 score, neither offense has found the end zone. Little lob pass, left side, a lot of pushing and shoving, but nothing doing. That ball is well out of bounds anyway. This is definitely a defensive battle so far. Both offenses are struggling to find the rhythm, struggling to find that seam, that nice little play that's going to get them going offensively. Third down. Four. And Simmons fires, passes low, and caught. Outstanding. No, right. no, wait a second. Ooh. The other referee, Tony, came running in and said incomplete. So my guess is they may be looking at this and we'll do the same. This is this is interesting because the official that said it hit the ground, he's looking at the back of the play. I had a really good look at it from where I'm at, and I'm not gonna pretend to be some awesome referee. I had a catch. I had a clean catch. I thought it was smooth and clean. 
They should take a look at this. I thought he had it. Tony, I'm looking at the review with you. I, I'm, I'm kind of with you. I, I feel like he he got down close to the ground. Maybe got his hands underneath that ball and made a nice catch. We'll have to see what they rule. Because now, you know, it changes the call here because the ruling is incomplete. Right? So you got to right. find conclusive evidence that says it's complete. Whereas, if it would have been ruled complete, and then they wanted to review it, it changes the Yeah, you'd have a story, hard time right? turning that on. Yeah, I agree with you. Well, I think the thing that South Dakota coaches and players are upset about it is the official that did have the better look at it had a catch. The official that was looking at the back of it had incomplete. And I think they feel like, at some point, I, I don't know what you're trying to see in that moment. Because with the way he was blocked out, I don't see how he could have seen the ball hit the ground. Then again, these guys are you know, much more skilled than I ever was as an official. The, the point I'm making is just logistics, angles, all of that. They're feeling like the guy who had the open view of it had a much better look. Right. He had a catch all the way. Well, the call is coming down right now. Replay uh, officials booth is it's, it's crowded up here. There's four guys in there. The longer they take, the likely it is that this is overturned because you'd have to change the Although clock, the, the spot, the yeah. down, everything. A lot of times you're right, that's the discussion. Where's the ball? What was the clock at? But that can work both ways. But you're right. It's it's usually the case when they have to change things. In this case, yes. They're going to reverse it, I am being told, to a catch. That's what I'm being told. That'll be a big play because that's a conversion of the down rather than a fourth down. Yeah, it looks like the punt team is going off the field and the offense is coming back on the field. South Dakota. So, you were right, Tony. If we had the UB the judge in this broadcast, <laughs> no, <laughs> that's I'm, our high school game. I'm glad they turned that over. I'm glad they didn't go with the conventional ruling on the field stand. It's right. like, no, I mean, you can clearly see that was a catch. That was a heck of a play. And he went down quick to get it. That was great focus because he hit the ground immediately after he got his hands on that ball. After further review, the rulings change. The ball is complete, therefore the ball will be first and ten at the 39-yard line. The fact that the ball has already been placed and the chains have been moved and it says first down you, before you, all of that you think leads you are, us to So believe. you already figured it out, Dave. Yeah, I, well I got, done. I had an idea. Well done, <laughs> Dave. Well done. <laughs> Imagine if we just said, after a few yeah. really all the feels changed, take a look around. <laughs> that killed the suspense. Oh, good running play on first down, and this is going to be very close to another first down. In fact, I think it will be yeah. a first down for mark, Kai Henry. Mike, mark that catch down, by the way, because it was a big catch with the chains. This offense has sputtered quite a few times, but that was a big moment there. And a guy being able to make a catch for his quarterback and help him out, it's a significant play. Quick to the line, Henry again, a collision at the 47-yard line. He'll bounce to the 45. But I like what Weber State's doing defensively. They're starting to find some wrinkles. South Dakota's finding some wrinkles in this run game, but Weber State making them pay on every tackle. Playing a very physical brand of Simmons. Intercepted! A tip drill interception. And the Cats have it. Benjamin picks it off. You know, as a former quarterback, I feel... it off his face mask yeah. and now it's an interception in the stats right it's a great throw by austin simmons into pressure oh dear you're and, right uh, i mean that was a catch it or wear it ball yeah. and it just didn't stick in the face mask unfortunately for austin simmons yeah those are rough so the cats take over 
Jake Constantine at quarterback and former Alta High star running back Josh Davis in the backfield. And Davis cuts back, big gain all the way down. Flag down on the 45. Flag is down, as you said, and it's way back on the far sideline. I think we got a formation issue here. We have five in the backfield. Yeah, coming back. Illegal formation. Offense. Five in the backfield. Tony's, Five yards penalty. Tony. Still first down. Tony, Tony's telling us he does, wouldn't pretend to be a referee, but he's been like he's like nine for nine on calls today. You know, not a lot of people know this, but Tony was a great softball umpire for no, years. No, I no, don't he wanna, was. I know you would know that. Well, yeah, I he know umpired you several know. of my games. Boy, that's too bad for the Weber State offense. They yeah, finally found a wrinkle. Yeah, yeah you're right. In the run game. Quality first down play. Yeah. Five receivers now for Constantine. And that pass is complete. They get back to the little original line of scrimmage and a couple of more. See, I like that throw. You're in empty. You know where you know where your short throw is. And you know it's amazing. You can get seven, eight, nine yards on just a little hitch if you're patient as a quarterback. Constantine now 5 of 9, 46 yards. And he's spreading it around. Second down. Again, got a man. First down. Wildcats are moving. Passes no, I to like that throw. Devin no. Cooley. A lot of times when I'm talking to quarterbacks, I'm like, look, that throw had a little bit of a question mark on it. There was no question mark on this throw as Jake Constantine throws a nice skinny post. He throws a helmet shot, hits his receiver in stride, and gets a nice first down conversion. That's a great ball by Jake Constantine. That's three receptions in this game for Devin Cooley. Three for 49 yards and a first down. Davis cuts it back, lowers the head. And the redshirt freshman very close to, and now he has a first down. You talking about rugby? You know, it was a little, a little bit of a scrum. Yeah. I like to see your running back keep his legs pumping, but you got to love guys like Ben Boss coming in and kind of pushing this pile forward at the end. They open up the holes to begin with, but then you see these guys just come in. <laughs> Look at and that. They're like, hey, man. We're going to finish this thing off. Good drive so far for Weber State. Another first down. The Cats in the red zone. Davis again. Davis cutting back all the way down inside the five-yard line. God, that's a nifty play by Coach Schramm. It looks like that was a plan where you fake like you're coming across his face on a zone, and then you come back and follow your fullback lead. Beautiful play. See Josh Davis making cuts, making moves, getting the ball right down to the five-yard line. 28 like, yards now, or 40 yards, excuse me, for Josh Davis on 10 carries. I like that play call by Coach Schramm. That was a cool play. First and goal. Constantine to throw. Touchdown. There you go. Uh -oh. Flag in the back. Hold on. Play is a touchdown. Personal foul. Left in the pass. Defense. That penalty we need to get force on the kickoff. Tony, you giggled on all three of those plays of that drive. Apparently, you liked the call. So. Yeah, like, nice ball. Nice ball. Right there. Beautiful pass. And you know what? Josh Davis, who was a big part of that drive, Riley, you've seen this guy a number of times. You just see him out and about. He doesn't look like a guy no, who's going to go running for a buck 77. Or, or, you know, he's just hes a great kid. He's a nice kid. But I tell you, you put a helmet on him. It's a different it's, it's kind of, it reminds me of you, Tony. <laughs> you know, 
know, 5'9", buck 85, oh, put a good. helmet on Tony. Yeah, that's, he'll, that's where the he'll, similarity he'll ends. He'll put it right in your sternum. Listen, listen, you, you, you haven't seen Turkey Bowl until you have me out Turkey there, Bowl's you know. big. Turkey Bowl's the big. The bride of big. Hunter. Turkey Bowl two-a-days just started. We're going to be ready. It's going to be a big year this year. <laughs> what does that consist of, Tony? Oh, it's, it's great. Eating you know. a lot. <laughs> Well, the offense finally gets on the scoreboard, guys, 18-3, to and what a nice drive. I mean, everything just seemed to go right. You know what I like about that, too, really, is, okay, so offensively, good drive. This is the first score that I would credit uh, at least partially to the offense when you factor in field position and the direct score from earlier, right? But one of the biggest stories of this game is that not just that the defense is doing a great job, they're finishing plays. You know, getting takeaways, scoring on a fumble like that, catching a, a, a bobbled ball in the air for an interception to give a short field. You know, it's one thing to be a good tackling team and not give up scores, but finishing opportunities for takeaways is a big deal. And that's been a big boost and a big help to this offense. They've had great field position all game. Well, and I've been there where Coach Schramm is when you're calling offensive plays and you feel like you're calling good plays and things just aren't going and they're not clicking. And, you know, a drive like that feels like a big relief because you're like, okay, now we can get something going. You know, oddly enough, I've been there too when you were calling plays that weren't working. And it's very, very loud. It's a little louder than the Weber State coaches yeah. next to us, right? They're a little bit Weber. more cool, calm, and collected. When we broadcast games at Alton, we've got one coming up in two weeks against Tim Few. That is going to be such a great game. Uh, but Riley's two booths down from us. If it's going well, you don't hear much of anything. But being up 15 points... With that defense, How about that? Yeah. I mean, you just, yeah, it feels bigger. It does uh, feel sure bigger. Does. Because everything that, even, even when South Dakota has done something positively, it feels like it's been hard to obtain good plays. All right, back comes the offense. Kai Henry wrapped up in the backfield. Another loss. And this defense is so fired up. You know, that was, that was a good play call. It looked like there was going to be some leakage there, but you just see Weber State is in every single gap. And even when you're trying to cut it back, it's hard to get yardage. Second down. Sack again in the backfield. Jaden Paoluni. Another local player. Every High single school. time you look down, you're talking about Highland High School, you're talking about in-state recruits. Boy, he just he sheds that offensive lineman, gets to the quarterback. That's a big play for this Weber State defense. And you watch him, not always the biggest guy either, that D-tackle position. Finds a way to get pressure. Simmons, nowhere to go with the ball. It'll be a completion, but well short of a first down. And you know what? On the other side, that I mean, these linemen, were, a lot of them were freshmen playing last year. Right. Especially on the offensive line. And, and they're still young. I mean, Paolo Uni's only a sophomore. Sataki as well. What was impressive about that third down is they only rushed three. They dropped eight into coverage. And they still got pressure on the quarterback. Yes. I mean, Simmons that's, had nowhere to go. Right. So that's where that becomes an effective play call defensively. Kick is away. Davis will field it at the 26. And the red shirt freshman. He's got a lot of room. Josh Davis can beat you in so many ways. And he is dragged down inside the 20 yard line. I've seen that before. Oh, yeah. Wow. Just a great, great player. You know, when, when we were out to high school, we used to compare him to Covey, the place right. for the University of Utah, because he just, he understands the moving parts. You see him get here outside. You see him stick his nose in there, just get as many positive yards as he can. An electrifying player. Not only a great running back, but a huge asset to this Weber State team in the special teams department. Brady shut. you got to credit him. The punter actually got in there and helped bring him down, or that was going to be we'll, a touchdown. We'll all be teasing him about that. Tomorrow. Yeah, oh, of course. So the Cats back in business again, right at the 20-yard line, leading 18-3, to three, two and a half to play in the half, and nothing doing on the first play. That's the tough part about that long return. Kind of have to take him off the field to give him a breather there. Yeah, that was Chris Jackson. You know, Tony, you were talking about how you don't
don't believe special teams is a third of the game, and I totally agree with you, but what I think special teams can bring to you is momentum-changing plays Absolutely. like that one, right? And that's Absolutely. where that's where special teams can be a big lift to your team. Totally. Yeah, not a third, but a dang important 15 well, to 20. remember the field goal was set up by great play. The, obviously, the interception was the defense, but special teams has been spectacular. Jay Hill is a master at that. Wide open to the end zone. Oh. And can't just barely be on the fingertips of Justin Malone. And Constantine was mad at himself. He knows he made the right decision. His timing was good. Just missed. Great play call by Coach Schramm. Fake the bootleg. He sets up. He's got the throw back to the tight end. He just missed the extended receiver. You could tell his reaction at the very least that they probably executed that very well during practice all week long. Constantine again firing downfield. The, the receiver stopped. I think he's going to get a pass interference here. Well, that looked to be hold. held up. It's pretty early. Or holding, yes. yes, yeah. yes. Holding. Defense. Of the eligible receiver, 10-yard penalty, automatic. No, I, I, I laugh about that play right there because as an offensive coordinator, you're constantly harping on the receivers. Don't get held because you hardly ever get that call. Like, it doesn't feel, yeah. unless it's just completely obvious that you're going to get it. And so right here, you know, you kind of take a deep breath and go, wow, man, I'm glad they made the that call. call. Because you feel like you have things dialed up and your wide receiver gets held, it can be frustrating. Well, and I, I'll credit Shahid. He sold it very well. I mean, and not that he needed to, because he was held, but he made sure the officials knew that. First down, they can actually get a first at the one-yard line. Davis wrapped up in the backfield, a rare loss for Josh Davis. Well, take your time if you're the Weber State offense now. That penalty is huge. I mean, an incompletion there, you're taking a field goal. If you're South Dakota, your offense could get back on the field maybe instead. Now Weber State can make this the final say of the half. Josh Davis back out on the field. And the bigger statement, obviously, is that Weber could get a touchdown out of this rather than just a field goal. Loss of four. It'll be second down. Constantine. Uh, I don't know if that ball got tipped. I think it did. Yeah, it looked like it, it fell it well like short. Yeah. Right as he was throwing the ball. So. Riley, how careful are you here in this situation with a QB like this? As a coach? 15 point lead, yeah. Got to have points. And you got to make sure that Jake knows the, you know, the two rules for quarterbacks in the red zone no interceptions, no sacks that can get you out of field goal position. So. This could be a conservative call here. Some people don't like that. But a lot of times, oh, they're going to go empty. Yeah. They're going to put it in his hands. That's good. You know, that that shows trust for Jake Constantine in this offense. Oh, what a great catch. Falling down, God, out of bounds. It's not going to be enough for a first I down. Mean, that's so frustrating. <laughs> wow, David Ames. Great call, great play call by Dave Schramm, and then your wide receiver comes back two to the yard. Two yards short. Yeah. Two yards short of the first down. You have to kick the field goal anyway. Some great of the, ball. Great ball here, though. Some fans wanting them to go for it here. I understand they're feeling the momentum and the no, excitement. I, I'm with you, Tom. I like the But point. a field goal yeah. here makes it a three-possession game. A three-possession game with that defense, you feel really good. I completely agree with you. Trey Tuttle. 21 yards. All movement all over the place. So, you know, this is going to be half the distance to the goal line. It wouldn't give them a first down. But it won't give them a first no. down. But they'll be a But now they're going to go. Away. Watch, they're going to go. Well, Jay Hill's got the offense. offense. Yeah. He's got the offense over there, but the field goal team is still on the field. But this would shorten this up to a fourth and less than a yard. And now the field goal team is coming off. And they are going to go for it. The play clock has not started yet, so there's plenty of time. And you have timeouts here. So yeah, exactly. Now, on this fourth down play, I understand you're trying to pick it up. But if there's anything Constantine doesn't like, you have timeouts in your back pocket. 
Or Jenks is actually up there. I was going to say, is Katie Jenks in the game? Yeah, so if there's something you don't like, you get a timeout. Interesting. We had a new quarterback for this play. Jenks, pitch. Davis, no. Oh, boy. Out of bounds, and it's short. You know, sometimes you wonder about that. Bringing in a guy who's been on the bench the entire game, and granted, all he had to do is run that pitch play, but still. That's one of those things as a coach. Am I right, right there, where you're just like, ugh, oh, why did I go for it? Well, I think, I think the call there is to bring Jenks in because they feel better about him in the option game. Maybe he's a little bit faster. Maybe he reads that play a little bit better. You know, with fourth and two, you know, running the ball outside sometimes is just a little bit of a scary moment. You kind of want to be able to pound that rock inside. Well, there's 44 seconds left. Coyotes are down 18 to three. They got a long way to go with Simmons standing in his end zone. And they'll keep it conservative, try to get a little breathing room on the ground. They got a three. But I, you know, guys, I got to tell you, this is the first time that I've seen Weber State play this year in person. I'm just really impressed with the physicality of the defensive backfield here at Weber State University. This, the clock's just continuing to run, so South Dakota not really trying to get anything going here other than seeing if they can break something, but that should do it. As long as no one takes a timeout, that's going to bring us to the half. So a good half other than that last offensive play for Weber State. The most important time to fertilize is in the fall. That's the time to build your lawn's roots and repair damage that was caused during the summer. Apply IFA Step 4 Fall and Winter Blend Fertilizer today and receive $5 off. IFA Country Stores, helping to grow the things you love. Let's go, top of the Well, I'm the type of girl who likes to roam around. I'm never in one place. I roam from town. Introducing the all-new Corolla Hatchback. Toyota, let's go places. Let's go, top of the Well, I'm the type of girl who likes to roam around. I'm never in one place. I roam from town. Introducing the all-new Corolla Hatchback. Toyota, let's go places. Hey, 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 what are we hey, doing? Hey. Don't go over it all. You want to start again? This is my younger brother. I taught him everything he knows. The pride of law! He's black! What's Mickey supposed to do? Dickie's in jail. You can't be me. You had a hard enough time being you when you had your chance, and that's why you're in here. And he needs me, you know. And I know. He needs you. You can't sit here. Don't add her to the chain. It was just a joke. Are you talking to me? Lame. Loser. Weirdo. I've said and done things before that I'm not proud of. Just as I've been hurt by others. The thing is, this, this is not who I am. And it's definitely not who I want to be. I don't want to be cruel. I don't want to spread gossip. I don't want to be a body shamer. We have the power to be more. We can create a kinder world. It's not that hard. We just need to stop. Take a moment. And consider others before we speak. And before we act. Be more. Be more. Be more. It's not just another day at the box office with Fantasy Movie League. Pick eight movies each week to fill your virtual theater. As the box office climbs, so do you. It's easy to play, but hard to master. Join anytime to start competing against friends and other movie fans for your chance to win movie tickets, swag, and more. All for free. Every week you play is another chance to win big. Visit fantasymovieleague.com slash Pluto TV to play. Weaver State finally starting to separate themselves a little bit on total yards. Remember, it was fairly, they were up 11 to 3, and South Dakota had actually outgained them. So that was good to see for the home team. South Dakota defense has been put in tough spots all night long. Yeah. And great stop to close the half. And they're looking to get off to a good start here in the third. Constantine comes out throwing, got a receiver downfield. Across midfield, I think it was knocked out of Rashad Shahid's hand. To the last moment. Rashad Shahid went up, went up to make an excellent play. I think when he came down and hit the ground, it discharged the football, and uh, he's he's now down on the ground. And, you know, sometimes the ground hits a lot harder than another player. That's a great point. 
He, he had an opportunity to make the catch. He's coming back. Second down and ten. You know, coming out of the half, Jake Constantine with another good throw. I feel like he's gained a little bit of confidence over this half. I think he might be able to, to help Weber State offense out a little bit more with his arm this, time, this, this third quarter. Empty backfield, five receivers. And that pass is complete. It'll be very close to a force the first down. Third and short. Another good ball by Jake Constantine. I like his posture. I like his body language. And I like the way that he looks when he's throwing the ball. Oftentimes, when a quarterback throws the football, you can almost you almost know when it's coming out of his hand, whether it's a completion or not, just by the way he throws the football. And that one there was, uh, was a great throw by Jake Constantine. Third and short. Davis got it. He continues to have a really nice night. 12 carries, 36 yards. But don't forget he had that huge punt return that really got things going. Well, he went backwards a little bit because at one point he had 10 carries for 40 yards. Now he's at 12 carries for 36 yards. So you'd like to see him establish himself. You know, early in the game they went to him a lot, and then they've kind of backed off a little bit. We'll see if they continue to get into the football here early in the second half. First down. Davis cuts back. He's got room. Davis with a big hole up across midfield. Looks like he lost the ball, but I think he got him back. Now, I don't know if he so much lost the ball there, except for when he got tackled, he landed on top of the guy and tried to keep his feet moving. Right, I think you're right. And then, well, you like, to, you like to see that in the second half. Well, if you're a defense coordinator, you're not comfortable until he's down. Okay. He definitely has the ability to pop back up like that. It was almost like he wasn't even just trying to crawl forward. He was trying to actually, like, bounce up. Another first down for the Cats. Constantine throwing again. He has to let that fly. And that tipped out of bounds. It can bring up second. Even though that's an incompletion, I like that out of the quarterback right there. Understanding how much time he has in that empty set where he can throw the ball, and he threw that ball where his guy was going to catch the ball or nobody was going to catch it. That's that You see Jake Constantine, Constantine right here kind of growing into this offense, growing up at Weber State right in front of our eyes. Different look here, Constantine. Two backs in the backfield. Oh, he's in trouble. Constantine fires downfield and makes it. He makes something out of nothing there. He'll only pick up a few yards, but that is big. And how about Josh Davis as a receiver? Well, that's what we talked about early in the game. Josh Davis not only can run the ball inside, outside, but what I talked about in the pregame is his ability to catch the ball and make people miss. You see him make one guy miss, and that's been kind of his M.O. throughout high school and throughout college so far is that he'll make the first guy miss. It's whether you have enough people coming after that first miss to be able to corral him and keep him contained. Third down and six. Again, empty back for Constantine. They need six yards. He's about the 35, and he goes down. He is sacked by Woodward, who got in there in a hurry. Pretty good offensive set there for Weber State. I think maybe they went to that empty formation maybe one too many times. That was a good pressure by South Dakota, and they were able to land a sack on Constantine here early in the third quarter. And we'll get a good look at what South Dakota's halftime adjustments were offensively here in just a moment. Great kick all the way back to the 11-yard line. So the Cats come out, mount a drive up to midfield, but then have to punt it away. We'll be back with Weber State leading by 15. Had to punt it away on their first drive of this second half. Still up 15, and here comes South Dakota. Simmons comes out throwing. Got a man in the flat, and that's going to turn into a first down. Nice first down game for South Dakota. You see him going to that quick no-huddle set again. 
It'll be interesting to see what adjustments they've made here at halftime. Simmons again. This time, nowhere to go. He just hucks it up there and out of bounds. You can see that's, that's a better decision than the decision he made in the first half where he rolls out to his right and gets sacked. And the legal man downfield. That's where that hurts you. Jay is going to back him up. There's no foul for an eligible downfield. The ball was thrown while the quarterback was outside the pocket, out of bounds. Okay. I saw Jay Hill point, yeah, we'll back him up. And they said, actually, never mind. Tony, now you're like 9 for 10. <laughs> he missed one. <laughs> I missed because they missed. <laughs> Simmons. Now it's their fault. Speaking like a true rep. <laughs> I thought you'd like that. But this is, uh, you know, it, it always makes you wonder, too, that when the defense is handling them, this is why that empty possession to end the half yeah, exactly. does feel a bit awkward because you, it does make you wonder like, how many times you've been as an OC. You know, you had a rough first half, but then you know quality adjustment you can make in the second half and it has an impact right away and so you have to believe Simmons in this offense are too good to really hold down an entire 60 minutes Henry and the pile is pushing he'll end up with a five yard gain on this one picked up about five yards uh, Noah Vea came out of the pile with the football there he thought he had taken it out of there Usually when you have a scrum like that, they're not going to give you that call. Second down and five. Simmons again, got a receiver, blowing outside. Third down coming. Pressure game right away. Played. I, I just love the defensive backs from Weaver State. There's a, there's a physicality and a willingness to come up. Uh oh, hit people. A little too much movement there. Oh, God, just, as an offensive coordinator, you hate that penalty. Third and six to third and 11. Huge difference on third down on both successful percentages and what plays you can call on third and 11. Third and six. Now they're back to third and ten. Big play here from both sides of the ball. Weaver State showing some pressure. And here it comes. Simmons. In and out of the hands of his receiver, the Cats have held. And the Coyotes will have to kick it away. Well, back to what you're talking about with the secondary. Fast, physical, but also impresses me. Intelligence, tech. They're incredible with both of those two. And that timing on that play was terrific. Time, terrific. Yeah, I agree with you, Tony. Look, Weber State does a lot of things to bring pressure on quarterbacks. And they put defensive backs, safeties, and corners included on an island where they have to make plays. And Weaver State has been making those plays tonight. Kick is away and it will bounce out of bounds. It's most likely to be marched somewhere around the 30. Now right at the 30. Mm. Now Dave one. Fox is uh -oh. one for one on referee. What's going on? Wildcats with the lead in the ball. The most important time to fertilize is in the fall. That's the time to build your lawn's roots and repair damage that was caused during the summer. Apply IFA Step 4 Fall and Winter Blend Fertilizer today and receive $5 off. IFA Country Stores, helping to grow the things you love.
chopper down. Well, I'm the type of girl who likes to roam around. I'm never in one place. I roam from town. Introducing the all new Corolla Hatchback. Toyota, let's go places. Wish is a top shopping app helping tens of millions of users to find hot trending products with savings of up to 90% off store prices. Browse trending buys and create wish lists quick and easy. What are you waiting for? Download Wish for free now. It just got real. That's my shooter. He has no remorse. It's time to be a big girl right now. I'm starting to feel excited now. I think I can work for another 24 hours. You can't open any boxes. And who's ever got much money in their pocket can own it today. Are you ready? We're back, baby. Here we go. They begin their second drive of this half. Well, Constantine, I want to talk about him for me. He has stayed out of trouble tonight. Nothing crazy. Hasn't had that throw. Like, man, you were talking about question mark here or there, uh, Riley, but you're not talking about, whoa, what are you thinking? As in, it's not like he's gotten away with a disastrous throw or disastrous decision. But the defense, the special teams, field position, running of Josh Davis, all of that has helped keep him out of trouble tonight. <laughs> Davis. Cuts back, and Josh Davis, very close to first down. The near he's official has a first down, and he's got it. I like that little wrinkle. I like that play where they look like they're running zone to the left, and then they kind of come back right. They've run that a couple times. Yeah, and I, I, I just like what what Weber State University does with their offensive linemen. You see them pushing downfield, getting a nice push in the second half. A little slow to get the play in this time. They're going to have to hurry up to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, play clock down to 10. Jay Hill's got his eye on that clock. 3-2. There's the timeout. Yeah, he's watching that all the way. All, all night long, they've had some confusion on this empty formation where they've had no backs in the backfield. I right. feel like... Josh Davis has been going one way and lining up in the slot. Then he's on the outside. I just feel like that empty package has not been as crisp as they'd like it to have. Well, how about this, guys? I mean, Weaver State tonight, they're playing against a very good South Dakota team. They have dictated the terms the entire game. They're up 15 points. They have not played their best game. You're talking about polishing that's all necessary. Their biggest question mark comes at the most important position in the game. And... They still very much look like a playoff team, at least if I were to get my early projection right into this season. Oh, I agree totally. And it's crazy yeah. to see that and go, wow, like all this stuff we can talk about that they have to get better. And they still look like a playoff team, and they still look so good in so many other areas. Currently ranked 11th in that FCS poll. and Big collision right at the line of scrimmage. Davis had nowhere to go. And he bounces right back up. 5,995 pounder, the redshirt freshman out of Alta High School, who just had a great senior season. Really, a number of good years, but that senior season was off the chart. Well, two years in a row, 2,077 yards rushing his junior year, yeah. 2,645 his senior year. He's a very talented runner. They've been trying to establish him in the run game. Now that empty formation again, a little bit of pressure coming on the weak side. They did a good job of getting the pass away, but it was a little bit high. And David Ames unable to haul that in, and now Weaver State will have to kick it away again. 
Fourth down or third? I think they're third down. Yeah. Oh, it is third. Dave, okay. just so you know, Jay Hill is not that conservative. He's going to go for it here on third. You think? Back to you. <laughs> <laughs> just to give you a... I don't know. You know me, Tony. I'm really conservative. Right. I, I take a knee on third and then punt. You're like, flush the play clock. Yeah. Use a timeout. Okay. My mistake there. Oh, boy. Constantine trying to make something happen. And... Now they'll be punting. And a flag just came in, so they may not. Uh, this uh, might be a late hit. When that came from way beyond the play, the referee down here on the sideline, it'll be interesting to see what this call is. I thought it was questionable whether it was a late hit on the sideline. At the players out of bounds. Personal foul. Defense. 15-yard penalty for the end of the run. Automatic first down. Oh, what a break. Well, as good as Weaver's been in some ways, South Dakota has really hurt themselves with some self-inflicted wounds tonight. That's one of them. Yeah, just no need to hit the quarterback there, right, Tony? Well, you, yeah, totally not necessary. Your job is to get off the field. Keep them in front of the sticks, get off the field. You do the job, and the only thing you have to do is hold up there. So South Dakota fans should be very frustrated about that, as are the, as is the coaching staff. Our viewers in Sioux Falls not happy with that call at all. The state good gain on first down, all the way down inside the 30-yard line. And, and speaking of that, you know, for our viewers in Sioux Falls and all, I mean, you, you have a good football team on hand, but they have got to get out of their own way, and they have not been focused tonight. Uh, they've had some timely miscues. And they didn't come out of the gate looking too hot offensively. And they've had a tough time finding anything in terms of some continuity on that side. And the water's starting to get red here because that defense, you find yourself down 22 against this defense you're going up against. It's going to be ridiculously tough to get back in the game. How about David Jones coming in, by the way, for that last carry? Well, and Weaver's been trying to establish, been trying to establish that sweep on the edge, they finally got that corner with Jones coming into the game. It was a nice pickup, and you could see his speed, his athleticism getting to the outside. Nice play as he comes into the game to kind of give Josh Davis a little bit of a breather. Second and ten, no gain on the last play. Jones still in the backfield. Along with Brady May, the fullback. Constantine again, downfield, got his man. They're in the red zone, Weber State all the way down to the 10-yard line. And another completion for Constantine, this one to Shahid again. That's another skinny post where he does a, does a nice job. You see him drop back, look it off, three steps and a hitch, throws the ball on the money. And Weber State has moved down here in a hurry. Hey, Tony, how, how traditional is Brady May of a fullback? I mean, that's unbelievable. Does he not look like a pro fullback? <laughs> Love to see it. Look at this. Jones. Get out there. Nowhere to go. He didn't hold up on that block, though, that time. Davis has been on the sideline for quite some time. There's a penalty flag on the ground. But I love a good quality fullback. I, I love it when you can use that as the extra blocker, a guy that's willing to sacrifice. But you, you, you're an OC. When you have a guy that's willing to sacrifice and you know be out there making blocks, and, you know throwing their face into the chest and into the face of defensive linemen and linebackers all day to open it up and make life easy, that's got to help with the overall unselfishness of the entire team, right? No doubt about it. And, you know, you're talking about a position. Oh, how about that? A hit at the goal line. You know, I think. Incomplete. No, I think they're no, giving, him a giving catch. it to him. He may, he may not have controlled it while with forward progress in the end zone. Yeah, oh, they, look at this. 
They're definitely looking at it. Tony, I think he didn't have control of it in the end zone, and then they're getting him the catch on the one. Exactly. Otherwise, right it would have been a touchdown, there. right? Yes, I think you're right. I think you're right. Because conventionally, you would say, well, this is forward progress in the end zone. Fans think that this is a touchdown. But the ref was right on top of that. I think he's very Great well throw by Constantine. The right call. There. Third down. Davis, right to the goal line. Man. But an underrated position in the game of football. I would like to see it back there a lot more. Yeah, good guys like Tom Rathman. Yeah. You know, this is a Lorenzo Neal. I mean, they're, they're good fullbacks. Yeah. Tom Rath. Such a big difference. Matt Sui, back uh, in the day for the Bears, Tony. For the Bears. the Bears. Hey, you know, Matt Sui wouldn't do bad. Did a lot of good blocks. Scored a couple touchdowns in a Super Bowl, but Warder should have had one. We're going for it on fourth down, fellas. Here we go again. Jay Hill wants a timeout. He's screaming for a timeout. This is... Now we'll talk about it on the other side. This is an All interesting right. decision. Jay, yeah, it is. Hill wants a timeout. Weber State's got a timeout. They're on the two-yard line, and we'll be back. The most important time to fertilize is in the fall. That's the time to build your lawn's roots and repair damage that was caused during the summer. Apply IFA Step 4 Fall and Winter Blend Fertilizer today and receive... She said she won't be taking you in as a client. We are a lesbian couple, but she's just a baby. She's the one you're denying the service to. When I say Italy, what comes to mind? Venice. Capri. Oh my gosh, Capri was marvelous. The views, the cliffside views, or traveling to Sorrento. Pirello Tours. Oh, Pirello Tours, for sure. Pirello! Hi, I'm Steve Pirello of Pirello Tours. With over 70 years of tour experience to Italy, it's no wonder Pirello Tours is synonymous with travel to Italy. I think of the culture. I think of Pirello Tours taking me to all of the areas that were important to me. The history and to walk up to certain areas and touch a wall and think, well, this wall is like 3,000 years old. Being on a Pirello Tour on our anniversary was better than anything I can remember ever on an anniversary. I personally approve every itinerary to ensure a stress-free one in a lifetime vacation. Salute! Call now for your free brochure and insider's guide. Call in the next 30 minutes and get this free $100 gift card. Call 800-314-1047. 800-314-1047. We are back. Fourth down. The ball is on the one-yard line. And Jay Hill wants to go for it again. Now, remember the last time they did this? Oh, no, he's going to settle for the field goal. You know what? I like this call because he, he missed on the three points just before half. So let's go get those. And as Tony said, I mean, that's that margin is so much more important to make it a three-score game. And the kick is up and good. Sal Mahorn. I think, I think that's the right call right there. I did too. I really do too. Now, here's what's crazy. If they go for the field goal last time, right, and then let's say it's 21-3 in that situation, I would be not opposed at all for going for the touchdown right. this exactly. time. Right, because, because now you're changing it to a four-possession lead. Exactly. Exactly. I, I've seen that numerous times, especially you get late in games. I'll never forget it. There was an Army-Navy game where they had a fourth and goal at the one-yard line. They were up 13-7. to seven. I want to say it was Navy that was in the lead. They went for it, didn't get in, 
and Army drove 99 yards to win at 14-13. It made no sense at all not to kick the field goal and put the game away. Like so, and I know that's not the exact scenario here, but if you can increase the number of possessions you lead by, I lean that way for sure. I like that call. Look, I, I think what happens when you're a head coach, when you get down inside the five-yard line, is you want to give your offensive line the confidence, and you want to give them that feel that, like, I believe in you, we can pound this in. But he already gave them that chance tonight, right? Kick the field goal now. Right. You get that same scenario next, like you're saying, Tony, where you're up 21-3, to three, then then you give them another chance because four scores is a lot different than three. Total. So with the 21-3 lead in their pocket, Weber State kicks it away and South Dakota. Well, and Riley comes out. Sorry, Dave, but Riley, when you're the OC, you know, you want to give guys confidence. You're, you're managing your team. You're managing the game. How often do you find yourself with the the emotional understanding of the message you're trying to send combined to just simply managing the game. How often do you have to, to ride that throughout the course of four quarters? Well, I think, I think it becomes a little bit more difficult because you're trying to teach lessons and help things when you're ahead by two and a half scores, right? Like, it's like, okay, so do I give them the confidence now or do I do it next, right? So you do think about those things as an OC. Simmons going deep. His receiver was... A little twisted up there, and that falls incomplete. Again, pressure on the quarterback. You know, it, it makes DBs look really good when you can get consistent pressure on a quarterback. Second and ten. Ben Clint in the backfield along with Simmons. And Simmons running out of trouble and right back into it. Oh, how did he get out of that? And Simmons finally just throws the ball downfield. Boy, they, you know, they really missed a holding early on. <laughs> did you see it, Tony? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, pick number 91, Jared Scheiss, gets a clean break to the quarterback, and it was almost a wrestling move to take him, try and take him out of the play. And uh, South Dakota's lucky on that play that, that that holding was not called. Third and ten, empty backfield. Simmons looking, fires. Oh, in and out of the hands of his intended target, Tristan Ducker. Well, you know, the Weber State defense is played outstanding. And then you have moments where South Dakota has an open guy there right there by the sticks. He might be able to fall forward, move the chains, and, and hopefully get something going. They've had some bizarre timing for mistakes. Drop passes, the 15-yard penalty on that last defensive possession that, that would have gotten them off the field had they not committed it. Josh Davis at his 35-yard line, driven Got back a little bit. And Davis does have some room. Lowers that head, and he's not afraid to do that, and up to the 45-yard line. You know, Tony, I really feel like that... Uh, that drop ball over the middle right there is because of the physicality of Weber State's defensive backs, right? He's open over the middle. He runs a dig. Ball's a little bit behind him, but you, know, you can call it T-Rex arms, alligator arms, whatever you want to call it. Uh -huh. But he drops that ball because he he feels the pressure of catching the ball and getting hit that they've had on them all night long. And so that's a credit to what the defense is doing even when they're not making the play that they should. You're 100% right. It's also because they made every hit count throughout the whole game. Constant thing. Gets that ball outside, and they're going to pick up about four yards. So give them forward progress to the 49. Now Flack comes out late. Brady May rumbling, stumbling, bumbling, keeping his feet alive. Guys get frustrated and come in and, you know, like you mentioned earlier, Tony, some of this some of this is just the discipline of the South Dakota defense not, not making the clean play that they need to make. There's quite a discussion going on about this. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 20, defense. 
15 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Guys, number 20s. First on the sportsmanlike of the game. Tony, how many unsportsmanlike penalties have you had in your career? In my career, no, I've never, never had one. <laughs> well, you had to get on the field first. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's the right. first that's part. Right. That and helps. when you run out and grab the tee after the kickoff, you don't really get flagged <laughs> for much. You know? <laughs> oh, <man>. Davis. <laughs> Cuts it back. Josh Davis finds a hole and picks up five. Yeah, never never had a technical foul. Uh, I did have one. It got rescinded, thankfully. Uh, they, <laughs> rescinded? Yeah, they, they like, took it back. The, How did that happen? That's they, the word, is rescinded? Yes, that's the, I'll use the official term. They, they took it back. They uh, completely heard that one misunderstood what was being said. Oh. oh. So they, thankfully, it was bad lip reading. wiped it back, yeah. <laughs> yes. No, I said vacuum. <laughs> never been ejected, never had it happen, and trust me, I talk to the refs a lot. Second and five, Davis again. He's going to pick up about half of what he needs. But I, but I always third hate, and short. I always hate it when people will say, like, don't talk to the officials. Shut your mouth. No, no, no. Learn how to talk to an official. I mean, Riley, you probably talk to your quarterback all the time about that. Like, uh, I think defensive players can learn how to talk to an official as well uh, for better understanding. Communicating with an official is actually a vital part of what they do. Uh, catchers in the game of baseball yeah. uh, to work with an umpire. I think it's it's actually a critical part, I think, of leadership and, and being a really good player. Third down and three. Big one here. Now, I communicated with officials, but I wasn't a good player, that's for sure. Constantine to throw behind his target. And it'll be fourth down coming. Just behind his receiver is a great read. Just need to put that on his helmet so he can catch the ball and run with it. Tony, I, I think your point's really well taken there about how to talk to officials. You know, there's a whole different set of rules for high school as there is from college, as oh, there yeah. is from Little League. I mean, college referees take a lot more abuse than a high school referee does. And I mean, it was a little bit of adjustment for me going from the college ranks back to high school <laughs> ranks for a while because oh, oh, they don't put up with nearly as much on the high school level. Fourth down here. This is a big one. Constantine. Looking, has the first down. Ooh, I like the poise there by Constantine stepping up in the pocket, finding the comeback on the outside, keeping the chains moving. You gotta feel positive about the progress that's being made little by little in this game with Constantine at the helm here for Weber State. Yeah, maybe he hasn't put a lot of money in the bank, but he's not in the negative, you know, and I think that's positive for him tonight. First down, 23-yard line. Weaver State up 21-3, looking to add to that. Boy, that play was stretched out for four yards, maybe three. But again, good, solid running all night long from Josh Davis. He didn't have the yardage he had last week. He's at 68 right now. You know, something hasn't been right about him in a little while here. Like each time he gets up, so yeah. it doesn't quite seem right. Now, every time I go to check on him, he's not being worked on by a trainer, and he ends up going back into the game. But he just isn't quite moving as well as he was earlier. And he's on the sideline now, David Jones in the backfield. And Jones has it. And Jones cuts back and picks up three. We got a third and long five, third and six here. Play, play clock and game clock about three seconds off, so they will have to run one more play in this third quarter. I think you feel a little bit better about the way Constantine has been guiding this offense in this situation. Constantine goes down. And that defensive push from South Dakota, they were in there in a hurry. And a fourth and 12 coming up, and you would assume, well, he's got some time to think about it, but when we come back in the fourth quarter, we could have a field goal attempt coming. Right now, though, the Cats leading 21-3 to as we head to the fourth quarter. Here, a beautiful night for Wildcat football in Ogden. Home team with the lead. Here's the 
a thing. We all have teeth, and those teeth need cleaning and cavity checks and fillings, and we want a dentist with years of experience, but my husband and I don't have dental insurance. So, my friend says, go to the dental clinic at Roseman University for affordable, experienced care. They have experienced dentists, working dental students, some that will graduate as new dentists within the year. It's like getting two dentists for the price of one. Now that makes my husband smile. Call them today for your free consultation, 801-878-1200 or rosemandental.com. Let's go, top of down. Well, I'm the type of girl who likes to roll around. I'm never in one place. I roam from town. Introducing the all-new Corolla Hatchback. Toyota, let's go places. Experience the Lexus RX with advanced safety. Standard. Lease the 2018 RX 350 all-wheel drive for $449 a month for 36 months. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. North Korean nukes are aimed at the United States. I am such a disgusting food monster. <laughs> oh, okay, 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 okay. The vibe is okay, great. Great, yeah. That's not how like anyone would ever act. Through writing women, I, I really come to understand them. Maybe even better than they understand themselves. Can I please go to Hollywood? I didn't believe a word no. of it. You have to go. You can go. We didn't cut you out. We thought you were dead. I thought you were dead. No, I wasn't dead. I saw you floating in the water. I couldn't hold my breath for a long time. Pluto TV Movies brings you a new movie every night at 7. What? No. All your favorites. Target. Okay, how about love? All the best movies. No, come on. Don't be crazy. Well, I can't exactly say no. All month long. They like it. They love it. Like that? Just like that. Only on Pluto TV Movies. You don't know what you're missing. back and Weber State looking at a 40-yard field goal attempt. Already leading 21 to 3, looking to add to that. Trey Tuttle. The sophomore. Missed it. Just to the right. The main ref said single good, and the other two ran up said no. He said it was no good. <laughs> he really wanted that field goal. That was really bizarre. Jay's even talking. The ruling Tony. on the field of missed field goal has been overturned. <laughs> Tony, you did that last year at the Turkey Bowl. Yeah, I did. You were like, no, it's good. No, it was good. I made fellas. an executive decision. It's good. <laughs> Well, there you see the missed field goal, and the, the ref at the center of the field. Well, we didn't stay with the play long enough, but you'll see him signal good. And the other two run up, and they're like, uh-uh. He missed it. Okay, well, at any rate, South Dakota back on the field, and Simmons comes out throwing. They'll pick up a long five on first down. Well, if you go up against this Weber State defense, you better bring a lunch pail. It's going to be a long day. No kidding. And they force you to execute extremely well. And it feels like any time you make a mistake, they make it. Simmons again, same thing. They've got a first down. Right, they have a Shamir too. Jackson. I get the feeling Austin Simmons is a much better quarterback than maybe he looked tonight. He didn't get much time to throw the ball. He had some drops. He had some unfortunate things happen that were out of his control. Clint. And he has very close to a first down. I don't know yeah. what your thoughts were on Simmons overall. No, I think he's a good quarterback. He hasn't had much time at all tonight to make any sort of play. you got to credit Weber State's defense with that. I like when they're going kind of this hurry-up style offense. I think that's giving them some wrinkles. And then I like when they've been patient in the passing game, giving them some opportunities to get what we call those extended handoffs, short, short hitches, little slants, where you can get into some rhythm offensively. Another first down, Austin Simmons, the 
junior quarterback out of Council Bluffs, Iowa, leading him down the field. And this pass a little low and behind. That'll bring up second down. Is Dakari Allen unable to get back for that one? Good crowd on hand tonight for this home opener. It wasn't that long ago. This place looked like a ghost town. Yeah. No, you're right. Deep ball. Well defended and still caught by Dakari Allen. I mean, the hand was right in there, and he still comes up with it. Well, that was just a fantastic play. It was a good ball. I'm not sure it was a great read, but that's just having a good confidence in your wide receiver. You see the wide receiver go up here and make a nice play. And when, when, when you get somebody to jump off sides, it's always a good play for the quarterback to take a shot downfield because you can get a play like that that's for free. First down. Simmons surveying. Oh, he threw that. His receiver wasn't looking at the time, and by the time he was... Pass is almost on his head. A bit of an awkward play right there. I thought yeah. that was a good throw, but the, the receiver was kind of turned around in a weird way. I don't know what happened there, but I felt like that was a good little scramble with a nice throw. Second. Boy, you don't want these fourth. You know, last week against Cal Poly, they scored late in the game. They made it a one touchdown game, and there's going to be a five yard penalty tacked on here. Tony, you were talking earlier about this program, how far it's come under Jay Hill. And he came in, the circumstances were just bizarre. You remember John L. Smith takes the job, and before they even get to spring football, he leaves, goes back to Arkansas. And from there, it's just a mess. And Hill's really turned it around. He inherited a complete disaster, and there's going to be a late hit. Well, this could be, could be intentional ground too. It could be. You're all right. I stand corrected. There it is. Ball would be placed as a spot of foul. Lost it down. Down. Tony, exactly. thanks for keeping me honest. <laughs> they, they gave me a flag, so in case yeah. I see anything. He's now 10 for 11 tonight on his referee. <laughs> uh, this is a big loss of down. This is a big loss Huge. of yardage here. They need to find a way to at least get back into field goal range. Remember, the field goal makes this a two-possession game. If you're going to get back into it, you're going to need that field goal at some point. So this was a huge and timely sack. On, on, you know, on the Who intentional the grounding, Tony, it's always the loss of down that's the killer to me. Oh, yeah. It just hurts you. Third and 29. Simmons needs a bunch. Picked off. Another big turnover, and the Wildcats come up with it. Who else but Landon Landis Stice? Did the scoop and score earlier in the game. Nice interception, nice athletic play for Landon Stice from Stansbury, Utah. We're going to take a break. Wildcats come up with the football, leading 21 to 3. The most important time to fertilize is in the fall. That's the time to build your lawn's roots and repair damage that was caused during the summer. IFA's fertilizer is formulated locally for the Intermountain West. Our Step 4 will help give your lawn stronger roots and a quicker green up next spring. You'll have the greenest lawn in the neighborhood if you apply IFA Fall Fertilizer right now. Apply IFA Step 4 Fall and Winter Blend Fertilizer today and receive $5 off. IFA Country Stores, helping to grow the things you love. Let's go, top of the Well, I'm the type of girl who likes to roam around. I'm never in one place. I roam from town. Introducing the all-new Corolla Hatchback. Toyota, let's go places. Look at you. You got a ramp. What made you do that? A lot of reasons. 
It's got comfort you wouldn't believe, not to mention legendary Hemi V8 power. More people are switching to Ram trucks than ever before. And now get a $1,000 bonus cash if you make the switch during Ram Power Days. Help us, guys. Let's Help. do it. On September 28th. Working for me, baby. Everyone. Help me. Going. Just do it. Theater, September 28th. You can't sit here. Don't add her to the chain. It was just a joke. Why are you talking to me? Lame. Loser. Weirdo. I've said and done things before that I'm not proud of. Just as I've been hurt by others. The thing is, this, this is not who I am. And it's definitely not who I want to be. I don't want to be cruel. I don't want to spread gossip. I don't want to be a body shamer. We have the power to be more. We can create a kinder world. It's not that hard. We just need to stop. Take a moment. And consider others before we speak. And before we act. Be more. Be more. Be more. Attention homeowners, are you behind on your mortgage? Is the bank threatening to take your home? Are you considering a loan modification on your own? Truth is, 95% of homeowners fail at trying to lower their mortgage payments on their own. At the Mortgage Defense Group, we know the new rules and regulations the banks don't want you to know. Don't let the bank take your home. Call now for your free consultation and get your free copy of Secrets to Reducing Your Mortgage. Call 800-715-6190. From the parks you play in to the roads that you drive on, Staker Parsons Companies is the preferred source for your construction service and materials needs. Staker Par Par Parsons. And it is a first down for Weber State after they come up with the big interception. Boy, this defense has been just sensational tonight, giving up just three points, a single field goal. And now, trying to add on. Going deep, Constantine. Flag comes out. I mean, you could see Rashid Shaheed was trying to come back and make that play, and he just didn't have room. Yeah, and oftentimes but, you'll see yeah. teams after a... 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. You'll see teams after a sudden change like that, the interception, you'll see some sort of play action some sort of shot downfield because there's kind of naturally a letdown on a team when there's a when there's a change of possession and that's why you see Weaver State taking that shot down the field. They get a 15-yard penalty that changes the field position right there on the first play after a big interception by Weaver State. First down at the 27-yard line. Jake Constantine tonight, 14 of 25, 137 yards. Back to the ground attack. Josh Davis cuts it back. Good pickup of seven. They've been very successful on that play where they're pulling either their guard or their tackle. They're bringing Brady May around. They're kicking defensive ends out, going up against linebackers. They've been getting a good six, seven, eight-yard chunk all night long on that play. Credit to Coach Schramm for a nice game plan in this running game here. Second and short, just outside the red zone. Davis. Oh, he's looking almost like he slipped. Nowhere to go. He'll lose a yard and a half. Davis, a quality back, and I tell you, when they get healthy, that backfield can have quite a nice little one two combo back there. This is, uh, you know, yeah, any injury, you want to see it become a, a discovery of depth. Everyone says next man up. That's a, that's a, lot, easy, a lot easier said than done. It's good to see Davis do it. Empty here on third down. Davis already at 84 yards in this game. Working on another 100-yard game. Constantine back. Going end zone. Constantine and Parker Cup. Perfectly honest with you, it looked to me like the receiver didn't look back till it was too late. I don't think that Cooley's had a great night, by the way. Three catches, 49 yards. So. Yeah, Coach Jay Hill, very high on Cooley. I don't think that was the throw that Coach Schramm wanted on that third down at six. It's not a high percentage pass throwing a fade route down the sideline on third down at six. So Constantine. another field goal coming. Constantine made up his mind right away that that's what he was doing. Yep. Trey Tuttle. 49 yards. And this one is good. All three officials say it's good. 
24 to 3. Wildcats with the lead. Great interception by Keelan Benjamin. And the two interceptions that defense has had so far tonight, those were not easy picks, but they're, they're interceptions you want to see your guy get. Both of them were deflected. You know, the ball's bouncing up into the air. It's one thing to get takeaways when they're given to you. It's another thing to finish off a play like that. The fumble recovered from the touchdown, the two interceptions, all of that. You can feel how it ignited this team. Really helped the entire offense even settle in on the other side. They cashed in with the, you know, the field position right around midfield after that Benjamin pick on that play. Well, the ten points off of those turnovers is big because we're talking about the difference between fourteen to three, twenty-four to three. Oh yeah. Which really at this point feels feels like a really really large lead for Weber State. The way that their defense has been playing. Well, they're just not giving up a thing. I mean, three points. All right, South Dakota. Back at it. Simmons, a lot of work to do. Dumps off short. It's well read. They'll get maybe a couple of yards from Randy Baker, but the defense is there again. You know, and they're finding little lanes. They're finding little places to complete. But the team speed of Weaver State, the closing ability of Weaver State has been very impressive tonight. Right. Even when there's been holes, like that. even when there's yeah. been nice... Nice angles or nice pass plays for South Dakota. It's been very difficult to get more than just a catch and a tackle. Already a third and five. Opportunity here for that defense once again. Simmons, quick pass. And it's caught for a first down. Still up, but that's enough for a first down. I don't know. Boy, you know, he reached the ball forward. I am stunned that they have pulled this back. It's interesting because if he would have caught it and fell down, he had the first down. Yeah. That second effort actually brought him back behind the first down. And you can see the head coach there for South Dakota complaining about that spot. Not not happy at all about that spot. Yeah, I think they should give him forward progress there for the first down. Harrison, I believe, is the man who's injured for Weber State. Might have got hit by some friendly yeah. fire. While we're waiting on this, let's talk a little bit about Landon Stice. You and I, he's a senior. What a night, Riley, that he's had. Take a look. What do you think? Involved on the sack right there. You see another sack. It's a scoop and score for Landon Stice. He's been all over the field for the Weber State Wildcats. What a great football player. You see the tip drill right here. Catching the ball, getting down the sideline, acting like he's played running back in that Stansbury offense back in the high school. Fourth and inches, and the Cats have held. And just as we were talking about Landon Stice, the defense comes up big again. Well, that's a crusher there. Well, yeah. it doesn't get marked down as a turnover, but it feels like one. Oh, absolutely it does. Just great suffocating defense tonight. I mean, credit to Jay Hill and his staff for being prepared. I mean, this is a team last week that threw for over 400 yards. This is the team that had Kansas State on the ropes. Yeah, they did. And uh, Oh, they lost by three there, 27-24. And so you just got to give a lot of credit to Weber State. The way they played defense tonight is very, very impressive. First down already with a big lead. And Josh Davis. Oh, he, he carried one defender about seven yards and then got popped. You know, Josh approaching the century mark. They've been hard yards tonight. And this is the thing that I like about him at 5'9", 195. You would think that he can't run in between the tackles, but that, you know, that was four yards, carrying a guy for another three, taking a big hit at the end. It's a very impressive night as far as grinding out tough physical yards for this Weber State football team. Second and four. This again, Davis finds a little hole on that left side. He's got another first down. He's at 
94 yards on the night. And as I mentioned, he is definitely headed in the direction of another 100-yard night to go along with last week's 177-yard game. First down for Constantine and Weber State. This again, and Davis, big hole into the red zone. Takes three guys to bring him down. We're still up. And he's gone over 100. Well, and you can see when he hits that hole, when they give him a crease, he's up to those defensive backs quickly. Just hold on to that football. You're in a four-minute offense tight mode right here, even though you have eight minutes left in the game. And you're trying to take care of the football and kind of finish this game off right here. You know, when you and I were talking in that first quarter, I was asking you how much can he carry the ball. That was his 26th carry. And David Jones now in the backfield. Constantine will come out throwing, though. Just throw it away. There you go. We got a short receiver, and they'll pick up... But you're right, he had nothing, and he ends up getting three yards. <laughs> it's a good job of understanding where the check down is. Get yourself some positive yards, take care of the football. Again, trying to get another three points to seven points on the board right here. Davis, 26 carries, Riley, at 106 yards. That's a four yard per carry average. Like I said, they've been hard yards. It hasn't been easy sledding out there tonight. But you got to feel good about that. Like like we talked about, Tony, him coming in when there's an injury and, uh, and really kind of just grinding out some yards. He's got kind of a new running back like he did last week. New quarterback, I guess you could say, this week in terms of a start. You haven't had an issue with handling the snap. You haven't had an issue on an exchange on a handoff. You haven't, right, no catastrophic mistakes on the offensive side. Well, Constantine didn't come out here and look like Baker Mayfield by any means, but at the same time, he was smart, stayed within himself. I think he trusted what he was doing throughout the night. And uh, good defense and special teams will also make life a lot easier for you. Not much there. But this it's is like they'll lose a yard you know, on third. What's the next step, though, for Constantine? If you're, if you're the OC here and you're working with this QB, Riley, what's kind of the next step that you want to see him take as you get ready for the next game? Well, you know, there's a couple things. Inside the red zone, he's got to be a little bit more disciplined. Can't take sacks in the red zone. You know, he's done a good job of not throwing interceptions. Got to understand when to throw the ball away. Keep them within field goal range. I think the other thing is, is he's just got to use his eyes. And as he feels more and more comfortable in this offense, he's going to be able to look defenders off, still make high-quality throws, and, and lead this team to more touchdowns inside the red zone right. instead of field goals. Trey Tunnel gets another field goal. The Wildcats now up 27 to 3. Everything going Weaver State's way on the home opener for the Cats. The most important time to fertilize is in the fall. That's the time to build your lawn's roots and repair damage that was caused during the summer. Apply IFA Step 4 Fall and Winter Blend Fertilizer today and receive $5 off. IFA Country Stores, helping to grow the things you love. Let's go, top of down. Well, I'm the type of girl who likes to roam around. I'm never in one place. I roam from town. Introducing the all-new Corolla Hatchback. Toyota, let's go places. Let's go, top of down. Well, I'm the type of girl who likes to roam around. I'm never in one place. I roam from town. Introducing the all-new Corolla Hatchback. Toyota, let's go places. So here's the real story. It's so incredible. <laughs> How you doing, man? Good, man. I'm just blown away. We're giving you a bird's eye view of the red carpet. We are going to break it all down and talk about the premiere episode. We're getting married. We're walking down the aisle. I'm so excited. Listen, I'm going to dance at the wedding. I love the sparkle. Style, snatch, slay. Good day. Story of my life. <laughs> Clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose. Surf's up, buddy. 
What is on your phone? America needs to know. The gifts are going to keep on giving. You're about to have the interview of your life. I'm excited. I feel sexiest when I'm confident. Wearing t-shirts and jeans and pumps. Ooh. I never really feel sexy. <laughs> Welcome to my home. Great to be couch surfing here. Can you guys bring in some wine, please? Uh, no more love. What are we talking about right now? I was going to lose my mind. This list of recipes hits the mark. That's how it rolls. We love the I would do it all over again. Weber State University Marketing and Communications and Weber State Sports Properties. And what a game it's been for Weber State. We were just talking about the numbers Davis is putting up. He's got to be knocking on a couple hundred yards total offense. And you had the same situation when he was at Alto. It wasn't just rushing yards. No, I mean, when you, when, you, when you throw in the total yardage, when you throw in punt returns, in high school he's running kick returns back, I mean, he, he, just, he just helps your team in so many ways. So it's it's impressive to see. I, you know, early in this game, I would not have predicted a 100-yard rushing game, and that's why I say it's been hard yards. They've been grinding them out, and they've been difficult in between the tackle yards, and I think that's impressive for 5'9", 195, to be able to grind it out and handle this many carries in a game. Trey Tuttle's had a busy night, kicking off, kicking field goals, getting it all done. The unsung heroes, the kickers, receiving Devin Cooley's at 50 yards receiving on three receptions. David Ames, three receptions for 26. So, But you know what? Constantine has hit eight different receivers tonight. Well, you really got to like that. As an offense that? coordinator, when you're spreading the ball around the field like that, very impressive. And shows five of them have multiple catches. Shows you an understanding of the offense, an understanding of where you're supposed to throw the ball. He's just going to get better in this offense, and as he gets more comfortable, he's going to do a better job. Screen pass, nothing doing. You know, Alema, or not Alema, I've worked with Alema too often. I just he's consciously right did that. Uh, but Riley, you were mentioning, you know, a lot of times the secondary can look great with the front seven and all that. And that, that is true. I mean, we've seen many times at the college level or NFL level where maybe a secondary is pretty good, but they look a lot better than they really are because of that front seven. Well, with Weaver, you can very easily see they have a great front seven and a great secondary. It's going to be a lethal weapon for them throughout the rest of this season. Second and long. And they run it. Wow. Just Nothing every there. time they run the ball, it's it's a hit. I mean, Noah Vaya, I don't know if it's Noah Vaya or Vaya. Noah Vaya? But, man, it was just a hit. I mean, he just trucked him right there. So every time these guys from South Dakota have taken the football, they're taking a hit. It's not just a tackle. You're taking a hit. Well, and you felt it early. I was mentioning it early in the game. It felt like every time, yeah, they, they made every hit count. You know, yep. they finished through the tackle right there. Simmons makes a nice pass, but boy, did he take a shot yep. right when he let that thing go. It reminds me of a few years ago when the New England Patriots played at the Denver Broncos, and those Broncos defensive backs were just laying the hits there in Denver, and I think it had an accumulative effect to get the Denver Broncos to the Super Bowl that year. Oh, yeah. And I think that's the cumulative effect that's going on right now for Weaver State is just delivering blows, coming up and hitting people. Fourth down. They got it. And that's how you win a, you know, an AFC title game. I think it was 20 to 18, right? Like that's, right. That's how that stuff happens. And I mean, I, it, it takes a special team to be able to do it on that side of the ball. It is very few times that you see New England receivers starting to buckle like that, right? But I, you can see that these receivers for South Dakota are very talented, but there's been some times where you can see that they feel the footsteps or they don't feel quite as confident in running their route full speed because of the hits that are taking place. Oh, that one was almost intercepted. Dangerous pass thrown by Simmons. I mean, but like plays right there, like Noah Vea is just flying through on that blitz. Comes around the corner, doesn't get the sack, but he makes sure to get a hit on the QB. And then Justice Brown, Probably should have had 
an interception there. You know, Very we always close. we always yeah. joke around with defensive guys. We're like, yeah, that's why you play defense. You know, Can't catch. PBU. <laughs> PBU. Pass breakup. <laughs> Second down. <laughs> Another pass caught for yet another first down. We've seen South Dakota do this a couple of times tonight. They get down the Weber State half of the field and then just things just start going bad. When you make things hard for teams like this, then it takes more plays to get down there. And there's more susceptibility to a mistake or a negative Sack. play. So. Down he goes. Tupuola out of Davis right. High School. Kavika Tupuola, been playing for this team for a long time. Comes around the end here. See him make a nice little mini swim move. Takes down the quarterback. What a great play. You know, I played I played football with his father at Snow College. Wow. You're that old. Back in 1992. Johnny Tupuola. Second and long. Approach three minutes to play, and Weaver State has this game well in hand. Well, Simmons gets out of trouble there. Fires short. That'll get him back to about the original line of scrimmage, maybe a couple more yards. It'll be third and eight. Time just running out. Hey, Tony, you were talking about the, the career of Jay Hill here as they get to the line in a hurry. Two and ten. His first year, as that deep ball is knocked down. Six Two. and five his second year. Then he goes seven and five, and then eleven and three, and that of course includes a couple playoff games. And I agree with you. This team looks every bit the talent of last year's team. It's. I don't think people understand how hard it is to turn something like that around. Because not only were they that down, we're talking the year before he got here, 70 to 7. Oh, it's horrible. You know, 70 to horrible. 6. I mean, oh my goodness. They never recovered from the John L. Smith debacle no. until Jay Hill got here. Yeah, then they had scholarship reductions. Everything. Fourth down. Pass is caught yeah. for a first down. Randy Baker. And Tony, I, I, I think your point is well taken. I think the, the thing that you have to give Jay Hill credit for is like, look, there's a lot of college coaches out there who knows the X and O's of the game. They understand how to call defenses, how to do those things. There's not very many coaches that know how to coach culture. Right. And I feel like Jay Hill has changed the culture of Weber State more than anything into a winning mindset, into a mindset that, hey, if we play sound, fundamental football, if we recruit in-state players and play hard, we win football games here. And, you know, what was it that Jerry Bovey said at halftime? 15 in the last 18. Looks like it's going to be 16 out of the last 19 at home. That's a culture change, Tony. A oh, culture no change. And to have the patience to keep doing the right things and tell the guys they're doing the right things even though the losses are still happening. Oh, that ball was almost intercepted. I mean, how about the fact that you, you know, you're giving games away still, you're losing games, and sometimes it'll feel similar to what it used to be, but you're, you're explaining to them that things are changing and getting better. And nobody likes the moral victories, but you've got to start somewhere. And it started there, and changing the expectation, the understanding, the leadership. And man, what a run to get to this point. Yeah, it'd be interesting to ask Jay Hill... Look at South Dakota trying to tack on something before this game ends. We've got a minute 40 to go. The ball all the way down to the 11-yard line. So I think it would be interesting to ask Jay Hill which game he thinks it was where he felt like there was a little bit of turning point in the culture and in the, and, and in the, the winning mindset of this team because clearly this is a team who comes in to yeah. play but against I mean, no, a ranked we'll, team, a South Dakota field team field. that's very, very talented physically, and the, their mindset is we're going to win this game. Right. Absolutely. A whole new culture, as you said. How much fun was last year? You know, they really had an opportunity to win 
that final game of the season. Probably should have won it. Oh, I mean, they were at, at the tip of the hat. Some great plays took that game away. No doubt. I mean, they did just... Uh, you're right there. You had a couple chances to end it. And, uh, you know, just a couple of nice plays that are made by an opponent that, that has special players that have been there and done that before. And, and it got taken away from them because, you know, sometimes two... I don't know about how you feel about this, Riley. Sometimes two really good teams walk out on a football field and it's a good game and, a, and one team barely wins. And, and yeah. you know, there's so much to talk about and break down. Why didn't they win? What went wrong here? Sometimes it's just two good teams coming on the field and one team wins. Yeah, That's and I, you know, I've talked to Jay about that game and, of course, he, he doesn't have any excuses. There's no excuses, but it's certainly one of those games where you can look at those four or five plays during the game that were instrumental to oh. putting that game away. And, the block you know, you know he'd, he'd like to have yep. some of those opportunities back. He'd like to play in that game again, he said, because he thinks there's some things that maybe they manage a little bit different, do a little bit differently, and that's maybe a different outcome. And they felt like that was a very good James Madison team that they were playing with. Simmons, quarterback draw all the way down to the three. They had a, what, they had a short week. Travel a couple time zones, all of that, the earlier game, and a night game, but the and, and despite game, all those little things you're talking about, they're still in it. And they're up eight late with a chance to end it. South Dakota trying to get a touchdown, but nothing doing there. A lot of pride on the line here. Mika Tupuola with another big play there on the outside. Tony, this is all about pride right here. Weaver State's going to win this game. They're going to go to two and one. But that defense would love to pitch a shutout with regards to the offense getting in the end zone of okay. South Dakota. Getting out of the end zone. Yeah. It matters. Third down. It's a timeout. Nielsen, the first of the half. This is a 30 second timeout. While we have a second, can I take a moment to give a tip of the hat to South Dakota? The athletic department, everybody around there, did such a great job to help donate funds towards helping oh, Sarah yeah. Hill right. battling cancer and Sarah, the, the wife of Jay Hill. And they did a wonderful presentation out there on the field during halftime. Jerry Bovey and some people there with the South Dakota Athletic Department. I don't know exactly who it was, but I was hosting the halftime show at the time, and I was watching it go on. And really, really special to see that kind of relationship happen. And, uh, what a what a great gesture from everybody there at South Dakota to do something so special. And trust me, it has not been forgotten by Jay Hill, Jerry Bovey, or anybody around here. Here we go, third down. Almost wrapped up. Simmons still alive. Throws to the corner. And that falls incomplete. It'll be fourth down with 21 seconds to go. It might be first down. Uh-oh. Late hit. Roughing the passer. D4. Half the distance to go. Resulting on a nice... There's 21 seconds left. They'll get a couple more shots at it. And that, that challenge just became a little more stiff for this Weber State defense. You look at Simmons. He has had a rough night. He's had to be picked up by his own yeah. line several times. He has stood in there and taken shot after shot. And over there on the sideline, man, staying tough, staying focused. Showed me a lot tonight. Movement. Yeah, I know. Right side of the line. I was trying to make it look like he was stretching. Yeah. I got a hand. Ball start. Offense. Number 73. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Well, these last 30 seconds are just painful. It was a check. It was a check back to the quarterback. I was trying to communicate something. No worries. Yep. <laughs> you know, Tony, you bring up that you know, Simmons is taking some shots tonight. It's, it is not a fun plane ride home after a game like wow. this. That. that that airplane seat feels tiny when you're hurting like he's going to be hurting tonight on the way home. All right, first down. 20 seconds to play in this game. Weaver stayed up. And, oh, my word. Pass dropped, and it was right in the hands of Dakari Allen. Oh, 
Oh boy, there could be some, some, some chirping going on. Taunting penalty, you put a loser sign right in his face. I think it was just doing the Fortnite dance. Out to the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 10, half the distance to goal, first down. That is his first yeah, of the half. Need that. Of the Jay won't like that. No. Nope. Not at all. Oh, he's just sick. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, dude. You don't... Oh, my word. Yeah, that'll get a flag. Yeah, that'll get a flag every time. All right. 16 seconds. The last 30 seconds of this game have taken about five minutes. Another pass to the end zone. Was it caught on the tip? It was. It was. Are you kidding me? Well played defensively. <laughs> that was... and it falls in their lap. And that was Allen again who just dropped the ball. Makes a great catch on the on the deflection. Well, a great assist by Samson. Great unselfishness. Tap it back to a teammate. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's just getting, him, getting his mind right, right? Great assist. Oh, I think he did catch that, man. That was a All catch. Right. Point after. Technically, you should go for two here, but it probably won't matter. <laughs> That's, <laughs> Sorry that is that. so Tony right there. Oh, he so bounced it in. <laughs> How about that? Sorry. <laughs> that is, not Tony, that you were going to score two points. Tony, Tony, oh, Tony. 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 You got your little go for one, go for two <laughs> chart there sitting with you. With 10 seconds you're, left you're in down the game. 24 with 10 seconds left. Yeah. Go for two. In case you get two more touchdowns and two more two-point conversions. Sorry, it's a habit. I had to do that. But, <laughs> They should have been chasing those points earlier, Tony. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Great point. Great point. You know. But this is, um, no, I mean, tonight, by the way, I know the crowd has filed out up to this point. A lot of people here tonight. You know, first game of the year, blackout. There's other big college football games going on today. All of that in this state. They have a following here. There is a passion here. There's an enthusiasm about this program that I have never seen before in all my years. Well, you talk about you talk about other games going on and enthusiasm. How about BYU beating Amazing. Wisconsin Amazing. at Camp Randall? You know, I knew that that team had taken some big steps forward. I even felt like they were ahead of schedule from where I thought they would be. But did not see month. that one. No coming. way. I don't think anybody no. saw it. Tony, I heard you on your radio show. You <laughs> called your shot. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Utah is trailing Washington fourteen to seven right now, midway through the second quarter of that game. And how about the Aggies? Riley dropping what a eighty spot on Tennessee Tech. Yeah, seventy seventy two. Why do you schedule that game for a Thursday night? I don't know about the Thursday night idea. I mean, that's that that game is a Saturday at noon type of thing. But whatever. Well, I mean. When the next athletic director job comes open up there, I mean, well, you can, you I'll, can start, I'll fix that. You can start fixing those sort of things. Right out of the gate. <laughs> Dave, would be, Dave would be scheduling home and homes with Tennessee Charleston. Yeah, Saturday, <laughs> but we'll play Saturday at noon. Not Tony Thursday would be night. Advisor with his go for two chart. Yeah, yeah all, all Dave cares about is just the time of the kickoff. That's all. Yeah, I, that's it. It's got to be convenient. You got things to do. And that's it. They're going to take a knee, and Weaver State's going to go to 2-1 and one on the season as they beat South Dakota. The last time South Dakota came to Ogden, it was a tie back in 1971. But Weaver State gets the victory 27-10, to 10, and a good all-around game for this team, really, on especially defensively. Yeah, and you see some growth. You see some progress from Constantine. You see some growth in the run game, but a very physical and good defensive team. They play good special teams, and they're you know they're learning and growing, progressing offensively. Mine kept me on there. track. Tommy was hard to Staying away sure, from sure. alcohol when I was first quitting was key. Instead of smoking I'm after I eat, I get up and take a walk. Hmm? I missed having the a cigarette in my hand. Yeah. So I bang him. He's like our boy Cantwell. Like Cantwell. Until I knew I wouldn't give in to temptation, I spent more time with my friends who didn't smoke. I went to places that were smoke-free. Okay, we're going to go right as this... Uh... All right, all right. Try. Sounds good, sounds I good. something each time. Do whatever it takes, no matter how many times it takes. I quit. I quit. I quit. 
We did it. So can you. You can quit. For free help, call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and CDC. Welcome to Weber State University Wildcat Sports. Time now for the Wildcat pre-game show. So let's join up with the voice okay, of the stand Wildcats, by. Steve Klauke. And to you. And a very pleasant good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Wildcat Warm-Up Pre-Game Show as we get you ready for tonight's Big Sky Conference opener between the Wildcats and the Bears of the University of Northern Colorado. Hello again, everyone. I'm Steve Klauke, joined as always by Jerry Graybeal, the former head coach of the Wildcats. And uh, coach, 2-1 uh, uh, and one record in non-conference play, but now every game really matters from here on out. You just might as well clean the slate, get time for conference. You know, it's time for conference play, and these are the games that really, really matter at the end of the season. There's, excuse me, there's no doubt about that. And of course, it's uh, one of those uh, games uh, against the Northern Colorado team that has struggled uh, out of the gate, but uh, they have a new quarterback, uh, Taylor Mott, a, a former, uh, or excuse me, Keaton Mott, a former uh, Bingham High School star, and he was known as uh, Keaton Torrey, came in for the injured Jason Nip last week and threw for over. 